GERD causes many problems, and one associated condition is Barrett's esophagus. So in this video, let's discuss what Barrett's esophagus is and how we evaluate it. When a person has GERD, an excessive amount of stomach contents reflux into the esophagus. These contents contain bile and acid that can provoke a change called metaplasia. Specifically, the normal lining of the esophagus is squamous cells towards the bottom of the esophagus, and these can be provoked to change into intestinal type cells. And that can be a good thing because those intestinal cells produce mucus, which is thought to possibly be protective against the acid and the bile. But at the same time, it can cause a process called dysplasia. And dysplasia is the transformation of those cells into cancerous cells. Given Barrett's esophagus poses a risk for cancer, you want to know the risk for developing Barrett's. And these risk factors are reasons that when a patient has GERD symptoms, we would recommend that they have an endoscopy to evaluate if they may have Barrett's present. These risks include age. Typically, a person who has Barrett's esophagus is older. The average age is around 55. And it would be rare that a person would have Barrett's when they're a young adult or a child. Men have Barrett's esophagus more commonly than women. People of European descent are more likely to develop Barrett's esophagus. People of Asian or African descent are comparatively unlikely to develop Barrett's esophagus. But more significant than ethnicity, family history is a risk for Barrett's esophagus, especially when there's a first-degree relative that has had esophageal cancer. Individuals who smoke or are obese are at more risk for developing Barrett's esophagus, especially when they have central obesity and the fat accumulates around their midsection. So how does a person discover that they have Barrett's esophagus? Barrett's esophagus itself usually has no symptoms. It may be found incidentally when a person is having an endoscopy for a separate reason, but most often it's when a person is having an EGD for GERD symptoms because of the association with GERD. Because age is a significant risk for Barrett's esophagus, a person who's young and has typical GERD symptoms probably doesn't need to have an EGD. But if a person has those risk factors that we named earlier, then they're often recommended to proceed with an endoscopy to evaluate for Barrett's esophagus. And when we're looking at the esophagus, it normally has a pale, glossy look to it. But when a person has Barrett's, the lower portion will take on a deep pink or salmon color and have a velvety texture. When we see that, we wanna take biopsies of these areas. We do so in a specific way taking biopsies every couple of centimeters in each of the quadrants of the esophagus. These are then read by a pathologist, and they're gonna look at it under a microscope and tell us if they saw the changes of metaplasia. It comes back with a pathology read, that this person has intestinal metaplasia, then that patient has Barrett's esophagus. If the pathology comes back positive for Barrett's esophagus, then the first step is to control GERD. And that's foremost because you want to control the symptoms of GERD that are uncomfortable, and that can be very effectively achieved with a proton pump inhibitor. But there are also substantial lifestyle changes that you can make that will not only more effectively control your GERD symptoms, but will also reduce your risk for developing Barrett's, Barrett's dysplasia, and the risk for getting esophageal cancer. We discuss that in detail in a separate video. The other plan to make is how to monitor Barrett's esophagus with future endoscopies. And this becomes a complicated issue because it's very dependent on what risk factors you have and what other health conditions you face. And so we're going to cover that in a separate video in the future. So please subscribe so you'll be alerted to its release. Thank you and be safe.